Guitar practice session 10324. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then provide a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help me to generate a routine, verbalize the things that I'm trying to learn, helping to get it in my mind, possibly providing information for others, working on similar things, possibly also providing for feedback. If anybody sees a better way to approach the things that I'm trying to be learning here, noting that this might look a little bit different than other guitar practice sessions in that we have our worksheet, but I try to get everything going the same way so it's as easy to visualize as possible from the perspective of us holding the guitar behind the guitar where we have the low or heavy string on top and then we have top to bottom, left to right. That's how the worksheet is oriented the low or heavy string on top, top to bottom, left to right, the same as from your perspective behind the guitar as if you took the guitar and simply imprinted it on the page. I'm going to flip my guitar around on the screen as well so it looks like I'm left-handed and I'll try to orientate it so the frets that I'm working on will kind of line up hopefully to around the same type of area as the frets on our worksheet to try to make things once again as easy to see as easily lined up as possible as we work on navigating through the different positions on our fretboard. I'm going to be looking at what I call position number four. I'll try to explain what I mean by position number four. We'll go through different naming conventions for that position, looking at what I would call uh, mode number five, the Mixolydian mode. I'll go through what I mean by when I call it mode number five. And then we'll talk about the different uh, intervals here for the Mixolydian. We'll talk about the different kinds of shapes within this shape number four. And then we'll, after I go over that, I then jump over on over trying to break up our practice sessions of like an hour practice session into smaller chunks. I jump on over to our, our formulas over here where I'm looking at the different shape types, this being a leaning back type of shape to get to our same scales and try to say, how can I see the shapes that I'm looking at as we go through our practice sessions when I look at like a two note per string shape and why is it that the shape looks like it looks like and how can I get my mind to integrate from one to the other when I try to play scales from different shapes which might allow me to do different things on the guitar. I also then look at the, uh, the three note per string shapes and this one, same concept, I want to take those smaller chunks of intervals that we broke the guitar into and then basically think about what if I did a three note per string scales. I played a scale where every note I have three note, that means it's going to lean forward. How can I integrate what I know about, say, the box house shape and so on to this type of scale where I'm using three notes per string and how can I integrate that into my plane so possibly I can switch back and forth to using a three note per string viewing of the guitar versus everything in one place and try to integrate those kind of concepts uh, together. And then I jump back over here and we go through our normal kind of uh, uh, interval discussion, this time in Mixolydian at the top half of the guitar and this is important because that's where the kink in the tuning is or the fault line between these strings. So all the shapes that we learn, which helps us to know these intervals by shape, get messed up when we go over the kink in the tuning. And we have to augment all of our shapes as we go through that, which is kind of hard to get down at first. But once we practice it a bunch of times, then we can actually not just know the shape that we're playing as like, a holistic, this is shape number four, or this is how you play a three note uh, bar chord or something, we can actually break that bar chord down into its smaller chunks because we understand the components, the intervals involved uh, within it is kind of the idea that, I'm, that I think this could be very practical for. So we go up and back looking at this from two perspectives that are typically used, one being what I call the seven note uh, uh, house double stop analogy. The second being what I call the hamburger and barbell 
uh, which is analogy, which is going to be for the pentatonic. That's how people usually envision the pentatonic. If we're looking at it from a seven note, what, note, what I call house analogy, how could we trim it back to a five note pentatonic so I can see the five notes within the seven note shape? If we're looking at it from a five note hamburger barbell analogy, how can I add the added two notes so that I can easily move from a five note pentatonic to a seven note uh, scale? So we go through up and back and we talk about where each of these modes live in terms of absolute positions on the fretboard that we can locate by the house uh, double stop analogy and the hamburger barbell analogy, which we can then apply to our other visualizations of the shape, such as the three note per string shape to help us orientate once we start visualizing that way, as well as this leaning back type of shape. All of the, all of the tools that you learn still are applicable with these other types types of shapes as well because it's all the same thing it's just looking at it from basically a, a different perspective is the idea once we go through that i jump on over to the modes in one place so that i want to play all the complement roads around the same center point looking at the different intervals as we think about the a from an from an a we we'll start with like the a major and then we go to the, the Dorian and we build in the same spot, converting this time just the intervals around the same root note instead of looking at the related intervals. Then we go to the Phrygian and then we go to the A Lydian and then we go to the A Mixolydian, the A minor. And then I noodle around for a while just trying to say, well, what if I played a song and I went from like the Phrygian a heavier minor sound and then I jumped on over and said and then then I'm want to go to a, a a minor would that just throw off the song completely like hey wait you played something that's out of the key there or possibly not given the fact that we're kind of navigating around the same pivot point of the a knowing there's only one distinctive interval between the minor and the Phrygian because the Phrygian is a minor mode and that would be then that distinctive minor second so I can kind of sneak that in, right? I can go from a Phrygian and play that minor second and say, ooh, that sounds kind of heavy right there, and then remove it, switching to the switching back to the to the normal minor scale, which means we would remove that second and instead play the 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 normal second, the major second. So notice all the other intervals are basically the same. So you wouldn't even really know if you're be, if you're in Phrygian or the minor until you play the distinctive interval, which is the second, which is again, kind of an easy thing, interesting thing to do, which means that if you convert to any of the minors, it's kind of a subtle change, right? Because I'm only including one interval that's different. If I went from the Phrygian back to the, to the minor, and then I went to the Dorian, which is the other minor mode, then I can just sneak in that major sixth and and throw that in there and it's not a huge change to the minor six and so again if i'm aware of that i might be able to do that change fairly well it's a bit bigger of a change of course going from a minor mode to a major mode so anyways those are the type of things i start to kind of uh noodle around with there and then i start noodling around uh just with this three note i try to just apply this three note per string concept to just like playing around uh, with it. I play like a one, four, five in the A minor. So the leaning back A minor, trying to play this like the shape and then, and then go to the D, I go to the D and then I go to the E and try to play like a one, four, five minor bluesy kind of thing. But using this concept of the two note per string, lean back type of shape. And, that, and then I, I do that pretty poorly. I'm a little tired by that time. And then that's it. Continuing on with what I would call shape number four, looking at what I would call mode number five, that being the Mixolydian mode. Remembering that I'm using absolute mode numbers based on the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode. So if the major scale or Ionian mode was mode number one, the fifth of it would be the Mixolydian mode, which means that we would create a major scale around it. But beyond that, beyond knowing that it's a major mode with a major third, we also know that it's gonna have that 10 note away minor seven within it as well. 
So we're going to be in the Mixolydian mode. We have the relative positions first through seventh on the left hand side. We're going to be in G Mixolydian. So here are the related notes to those relative positions. Here are the modes related to those positions using a numbering system, however, that is tied to the major or Ionian scale, hoping that that will help us to orientate ourselves so we know where we are in this relative universe of modes spinning around in circles and whatnot. We can pinpoint somewhere, at least try to see what's around us from that perspective. Then we're gonna have the intervals. So the intervals are, are useful to be comparing them to the relative major or minor scale. In this course, the major scale, because we have a major mode, in which case all the intervals are the same, except for that seventh. It's got that 10 note away minor seven. So we have a perfect first. We have a two note away major second, a four note away major third, a five note away perfect fifth, a seven note away, per sorry, five note away perfect fourth, a seven note away perfect fifth, a nine note away major sixth. But then, we have that minor seven. It's the only minor in there because we're in a major mode, which typically only has the intervals if it was the major mode of the majors and the perfects. But now, of course, we throw in that one minor within there, that minor uh, seven. So when we look at the shape over here, we're going to call this shape, I would call it shape number four. Why? Because if I just generically call this shape number one, our normal kind of shape, then this would be number two, this would be number three, that means that's going to be number four. That's a good way to do it, because even though it's quite generic, it's basically the genericity is easy to apply to whatever mode we're in. And we just have a, a once again, an absolute numbering system. And again, I, I can't help just keep kind of comparing this stuff kind of to like the idea of physics where there's no special place it's all relative right that's the problem we can't orientate ourselves it's like dude there's only 12 notes this can't be that difficult right but we keep on going around in circles because they're all related and it depends on where we're starting from so to have some things that we're going to say these are fixed they are artificially fixed but they're going to be our point of reference is you know is useful so to just generically name a numbering system of this is shape positions one through five, I think is useful. But you can also use the caged system, of course, which is based on open positions, which only have three notes in them, although we're playing five strings because some of the notes repeat. And if I use that system, I have to then go to the relative major, which in this case is the Ionian mode, of course, that is the relative major all the time. And it's a C. And if I look at that C, then I can build a chord around it and say, oh, that, look at that. That's a open position C, which happens to be the same name that I would name the shape in because I'm in the C, the C shape up here, if I did that same kind of shape up here. So I could name that the C shape based on the three note, the three note, let's do it this way, the three note uh, major scale <clears throat> that is based on the open positions that are based on the shape, not on the actual note, which happens to be the same this time because I'm in the key of C and I'm in position number four. Uh, so, so, but I have to base it in the five note pentatonic, which would be unique to a three note chord shape of those open position chords, and then add the other two notes to get the seven note uh, scales that we'll be looking at. That's gonna be, that's how you'd have to kind of think of it from that perspective. You might also just call it the shape by the, by the top thing in the shape, the top note, the top thing <laughs> is a note, uh, the top note in the shape. Uh, if you named that position from that, you could call it the uh, Phrygian shape because if I played from this E through the shape, I would be playing a Phrygian, which you could see with that distinctive second, which is a minor second as opposed to a major second, which the only other one that has that is the Locrian mode, right? So, th so that would be a distinctive minor, or I can call it the Lydian shape, but I would have to specify that the shape is basically the second note of the shape for Lydian, which is the same thing you have to do with actually a major shape, because this major shape over here, which is what I would call position number two, you might call it an E major shape, also happens to be the second note in the shape if you're playing all seven notes as opposed to a five note pentatonic. And there, because the one before it is one that we don't normally use, the Locrian mode, right? 
So we just might call that a major mode. But again, it's the second note in the shape because we only have five shapes when we cut the fretboard into five chunks and there are uh, seven modes. So we're gonna have some shapes that we're gonna have to use for our main shape for both modes, right? And that, and so anyways, so now we're on, so, so, so the next thing I wanna do is within the shape, break out the shape into its components. I'm not the only one that does this, by the way. This is quite common to do, to further see the shapes on the guitar into chunks so that I don't have to view the shape from top to bottom or play it from top to bottom in order for me to basically visualize where I am in the fretboard. And all of these shapes that we see within here are gonna be repetitive across the whole fretboard. So, it's, so, it's, so one way to see it is we could say, well, there's five strings on the guitar plus a repeat string. So it's basically a five string instrument with a repeated E at the bottom is one way you can look at it. I can break the string chunks. I still want to chunk them together because that's better for memorization, but not too, not too close. I don't want the whole six string chunk. That's too much to memorize because now I have to memorize where my finger goes on each string on six strings, right? And our mind can only hold like, what? <laughs> seven things, up to seven things in our short term memory at a time. So we can break it out. We can break the five strings into a two string, two string, one string or into a three string, two string shape. And these are both quite common. I would call the first one, the house analogy. And this is gonna be the seven note shape. So that means I'm gonna break it into this house, the, 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 the box over here and the double stop. You end up with a house double, a double stop house and then a two note per string, which I'm calling a flat since I'm still talking about like how, housing units. And then the house double stop or the house apartment over here, right? the house and the one flat apartment, right? So that, those are gonna be the shapes uh, that we would see if we have a seven note type of shape. Now, if we have a seven note type of shape and we wanted to back it off into a five note pentatonic, then I can take the house bit and remove the top left and the bottom right. Those are the ones that I removed to then trim back from seven to five pentatonic and that's of course removing the mix the Locrian and the Lydian modes in essence. Or I can see it from the perspective of a three note, which is usually how people visualize the pentatonic shapes, a, a, a three string and a two string. So the three string would be this hamburger shaped here. So I'm gonna say this is the hamburger shape, but it's twisted up because of the kink in the tuning. So it's easier to see uh, over here in this hamburger shape because there's no kink in the tuning and that and so I can see it there and then the barbell the barbell is the other shape and I would only be playing the outer notes in the barbell if I was playing a five note pentatonic what if I want to go from a five note pentatonic to a seven note and I view the fretboard from a pentatonic hamburger barbell shape well then you have to add the inside of the barbell which is once again, including that Lydian and then uh, the, the Locrian over here, the handles of the barbell have to be included. And on the hamburger shape, you can imagine putting a hat on the hamburger, a baseball cap that's pointing to the right where, this, where I'm imagining the beach is on the sun hole over here. That's where the beach is, that's the ocean. And so you add a hat and in order to deal with that added weight on the left, you also have to add a foot to the right so that you can have a base. So it ends up with like the hamburger has like a Z bun, a Z bun on it. So, though, so that's going to be the shapes that we think about. Now, before I go into each of the notes in this shape, and we, we practice our intervals in there, and I'm going to be practicing from the bottom part of the shape now, uh, looking at this G to this G, and that's because we did the top. I did the top part yesterday. Uh, and this will help me because I have to go across the, uh, when I go across the invisible fault line, it's gonna mess up all my shapes. So then I have to think about what do the shapes look like in intervals down here. So I'll do that. And then, but before we do that, I wanna also think mainly in terms of this house analogy, what would happen if I see the fretboard from a three note per string shape? Now remember, I really think that this breakout is used I, by basically everyone because it's it's the it's the most practical way to think about a fretboard because we're trying to reach everything within a four finger span 
which allows us, if we want to make more complex chords, to reach more strings re so I can get to more notes. When I start to think of the same scale in other variables, like a two note per string or a three note per string, those are going to be interesting layouts because it helps me to navigate up and down the guitar and possibly move between these shapes in ways that we might not have thought about before. Uh, and so they have their pros and cons too, possibly more for lead guitar or for like moving again, like between kind of the shapes. So I, I want to try to break up my practice system to, br to bring those in, in as well. This is what I would call the two note, a two note per string shape. And just to touch on that, uh, notice that the easiest way to kind of think of a chord on the guitar is actually leaning back. It's not the easiest way to finger the chord, but it's kind of the easiest way to see th the chord on the guitar, right? So like this, if I looked at, at this C up top, uh, I'd say, okay, that, uh, let's bring this up. I got the C, I've got the E, and I've got the G, right? That's going to be, and why is that the easiest way to see it? Because that's my first, it's in order, and then the, the major third is behind it, and then the fifth is behind it here. So everything's in the proper order. It's not inverted in any way. And in guitar, obviously, we invert things all the time because we have a lot more limitations on the guitar to grab whatever's available than you might have, say, on a piano, in which case you have more options to choose whether you want to invert something or not. On the guitar, it's like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm looking for a third. I don't care what octave it's in. I don't care what string it's on, really. I, I'm just trying to make a chord that I'd like a third in. And, I, and so we probably don't have as much understanding completely of the, <laughs> the, the octaves, right? So then if, but if I look, if I look at the other one, this D, uh, so I can go from the D to the, to the, to the F, uh, to the G, so now I'm just going up to the next shape here, and let's move these out of the way. So, so now, so now, I, if I start on the C, notice, and then if I look at this D, then I have do do uh, do do do. Wait a sec, that's up here. Do do do. So notice I have the same kind of shape, except instead of a major third, I have a minor third. So it goes boom to the minor third, boom, back. And notice if I just combine those two shapes together, if I can visualize those two shapes, then I can start to see uh, uh, a two note per string chord or, or, or scale because it, because it goes C, D, E, F, G, A, right? So I could see and, and, and if I wanted to keep it going, it would be right B, C down here. But if I want to complete it. But here we go, we have this, you know, the C, D, E, F, G, A, and then B, C. So that's not quite as comfortable to play all the time, of course, because now you're playing your scale leaning back. But again, it's useful to see that because that could, you know, it's kind of interesting to play if I, if I played that it's just a kind of an interesting pattern, right? I could do it on the A, and then I could do it like over here, and then, right? So it's kind of, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting way to move usually to this way on the guitar. You can also do it, of course, moving, you know, moving up, so, you know, or, you know, you could go the other way with it, but, I think I totally messed that up, but that's the idea. So that's the two note per string. And I think that's, and that's interesting because like I can play each note in the scale, C, D, E, F, G, and make the chord that leans back by just changing whether it's going to be a minor third or a major third based on, of course, the, the first one, four, five being major and the two, three, six being minor. And then I just combine those two together. If I can visualize those two chords, then I can make a scale between them and I can play with that. Then I can play with that scale. And it's kind of actually easy to create uh, because, because we're not using like a generic five shapes for seven modes. Wherever the string starts, I can just build a lean back major or minor chord from it or diminished if I need that, right? 
uh, you know, the diminished would just be boom, boom, boom. So it's a longer stretch to get it because because then you have that fifth that's a flat fifth, but not not impossible, right? For, that would be from the B. And then if I wanted to stretch out to play the chord, that one is easier to play if you ha if you use the classical kind of style of leaning the guitar up. Okay, so then, so so but I think that's interesting. Now, obviously, if I go, if I only go two notes per string, what happens? It tends to it tends to lean back because what happens here? If I go if I go, let's cut. Because because when I get to this D, my option is to go up to the to the E, or to go back to this E. If I went up to this E, then the next one's an I would abandon this E and move up to the F, right? But if I don't go up to this E and I decide to the go to the one behind it, now I've gone in reverse. Now I'm going backwards, and then I go to the F. My option on the F is to go to this G, or I can go back to this G. If I go to this G, then I'm, I can abandon this one and I can move up to the A, which is going to start me to at least be in the same column or tend to move forward. If I abandon this G and go back to this G, that's going to lead me back, right? Here's the A. Here's the A. My option is to go to this B or to go to this B. So the two note per string is going to tend you towards leading back. And again, it's easy. It's actually easy to build if I know what my major and minor chords are, and then I can just create a lean back, what I would call like a lean back chord, which is actually the most easy chord to see, although not the easiest chord to play, and then just link them up and I can get my, and I can get my, my, this would be the major scale. If I went from here to here, that would be the Dorian. If I made the two chords, if I went from, from here to here, that would be the Phrygian, right? And then, if I did this on, on a, a, a three note per string, what happens on a three note per string? So now I'm going to look at the key of C. You, you can see what happens is I'm starting to lean forward in the three note per string. So, which makes sense because notice the three note per string. Uh, and, and by the way, if I, if I further analyze this, this lean back thing, notice where the shape starts if i'm playing a c major it still shut it still starts in the house here's the house here's the box i'm still going to start in what i would call the penthouse of the house where the major lives leaning forward looking towards the ocean so all the shapes are still the same if you still want to see that we could still see that square and then and then I, and, and and every all the modes are living in the same kind of place when i see it that way but now i'm visualizing it a different way and then i'm creating a a chord looking at the one, three, five, and I'm kind of connecting the the different one, two, three through seven chords together. And but it still works to visualize it the way we've seen it because you're still going to have the box and the double stop. Everything uh, is the same. How do I orientate where I am? Well, if I can see that box, then I know that that's going to be the the major. I know that this is basically where the Phrygian is. If I wanted to start playing you know, in Phrygian, and I saw that box, I can start playing from here, and then and then build, I can build my lean back chord from here, boom, one, three, five, and then I can connect it that way, and so on. So all these shapes kind of still play out. You can see these shapes clearly if you're leaning forward. So now I'm going to look at the same thing. In this case, this orange is what I would call position number two, otherwise known as the major uh, the the major position, uh, or the or in the cage shaped, it would be the E E uh, major shape, and then this purple box represents what I would call position number three, uh, which would be the uh, position number three, which would be like a D caged system shape, and then if I do the three note per string, it looks similar. If you start on the major, it becomes clear what the difference is. Because on our normal five, four to five fret shapes, five frets across the fretboard, we don't span any one finger in five frets apart. We never reach the pinky out that far. We never go that far on the pinky. Uh, instead, whenever we get past this point, we go back here. 
So, so that means that we're still going to have three notes per string because most of the three notes per string are what we've seen before, which are the, the house double stop and the double stop house shapes, which still have three notes per string. Those are the same in the two shapes. It's different where, where, when we end up with that two note per string shape, which was like the meat of the hamburger or the flat shape uh, that we talked about over here. It would be like the middle of the hamburger, like right there. That one, we only have two strings, two notes per string. So in the three notes per string, we would have to, we would have to reach up if we wanted to get three notes per string. So in this case, if I took three notes per string, that's why it tends to, for us to lean forward. It's going to tend for us to lean forward. Sometimes it'll start to follow the same, the same shape as we think about in terms of our just five fret shapes because we'll be in this bit of the three note per strings, which is the, the box double stop and the double stop box. It's only when we get to this stretchy one that, that then we realize, oh, now we're reaching up across, across a bit more. So notice here, the pros of this system, once again, is that it, that it, it starts on every note in the mode. So I can start on a C and if I play three notes per string going forward, I'm playing a major mode. If I start on the second note, then I'm playing in the Dorian. If I started from the D and I played three notes, I'd be on the D, I'd be a Dorian. If I started on the E, I'd be on Phrygian. So that's nice. The, the other pro, especially if you're playing in, in a major key, to me, is that it's hard to reach back to that third. Because if I'm, my pointer finger is up here, I want to reach up to this third. So that's why it's often good for like, if you're doing lead stuff, I guess, right? Because then you can reach up here instead of having to go back here, especially if you're in the major, which is why I, one reason I think I tended towards playing the minor because because I can reach that third and it's in my box. So one th the, so I think this top box when you're playing in the major is useful just to see that you can reach outside of the box to pick up that third and then go back to inside the box to do whatever you're doing, you know, in here. So, so that's nice. Now it's interesting to kind of analyze this box though, because notice what happens here is we've got what I call this is actually a, a pillar. I'm going to, we have a pillar shape, which is going to be three pillars like this. So, so this is a three string shape uh, that goes like this, where if I'm on the major shape, I'm starting in the middle of it, right? I'm starting here, which is the, in the middle of what I call the pillar shape. And then we have what I would call the, the house double stop and then the double stop house. Notice if I add those up, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strings. So this shape is kind of going across seven strings and we only have five strings and a repeat string, five or six strings, however you want to look at it. So the thing that's funny about this shape is it, it repeats after seven, but there's only five to six strings depending on how, how you look at it. So you can't see the whole spectrum of the shape from just one run through the guitar. And we have to be able to visualize that, okay, wait, when I'm looking at this, I'm actually only on the middle of, of the, of this, three pillar shape and then when I and then when I go back up it's going to repeat so let's just let's run through it real quick try to get this in my mind notice it's also starting on the 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 the, the second side of the box so knowing that this is a box is still useful but if I'm playing three notes per string I'm abandoning the back side of the box until I get to the next box in which case we're then going to play it it's also useful to just realize that there's seven notes in a scale. And if I play three notes per string, that means I'm going to get six out of the seven notes in two strings, right? So if I play three notes per string, so now I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's not ended. So now I have to end it down here. So that's why the shape gets out of whack because now I have to go down here and go boom. So that means now, even though I abandoned the back of the box over here, I had to play the back of the box here to get that leading tone 
back to eight or one. So, so now when I'm on the second round of the same shape, then, then you can actually think of it as though I'm playing in essence, the, the, what would be the Locrian shape, right? Three note per string Locrian, which would be this, these three notes, uh, right? Because I'm starting on the second note of what would be the Locrian shape. Or if I wanted to repeat the same three note per string shape, then I can start on the C again and then play it out here, right? Boom, 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 and start over and play the same shape down here. But if I continue on, then I'm actually playing, it's the second note in the shape, and then I go down to the bottom of the shape, and then it moves up because of the kink in the tuning. So now we're up here, doot, 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 and so do we go doot, 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 and then it ends out again. So we've played through one octave, two octaves, and the shape, we still haven't gone through the whole six strings because we're playing three notes per string, which means we're going through the octaves fairly quickly. And then we get to the bottom of what I call the double stop hamburger. And then if I go back up top again, notice you could think of it, see I end up off at, at an F, like you could move up to the G over here, but I typically think of it as, well, this E string is a repeat of this E string. So when I get to that D, I usually think of it as repeating up here, right? The D, E, F repeats up here, and then I get to the G. So finally I get to this G, which is actually the top of the, of the pillars shape. So now I get the top of the pillars. So notice it's not till I get to here that I've actually gone through the entire cycle, right? Even though I've gone through multiple octaves, I haven't gone through the entire cycle because I'm starting, this whole bit right here is starting in the middle of what I call the three pillars shape. And then it goes to the bottom of what I would call the three pillars shape. And then it goes to the double stop, the double stop box, uh, the, the, the box double stop. And then it goes to the double stop box. And that bottom of the double stop box repeats up here. And then finally, we get to the top of the three pillars shape, which we haven't yet played at all through that whole round. And then we get back to where we started, the middle of the, the, uh, of the three pillars, which is where we started up here. So, that, so this, is a, this system is quite useful uh, but I don't think, but I think if, I think kind of visual, being able to kind of visualize the, what, what I'm doing here so that I can see what's actually happening as we go around, uh, is, is helpful. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to, to connect this to what I'm, what I'm looking at in terms of, uh, the box double stop. So I'll stop rambling with that for now. Those, hopefully there were some insights there that'll stick in my mind. I'm going to go back over here then. And let's just do our normal process down here at the bottom of this shape. So here's my G uh, here. So we're going to go from here to here. So so where where are where are we? We're on the Mixolydian, which is going to be the bluesy mode. Where does it live? Well, it's not in the house, even though it's a major shape because it has that flat seven. So it's outside hanging out with the minor modes. And so it's over here with the house analogy shape in uh, the, the, the flat, the middle or flat uh, one, one string sh part of that sh seven note shape. In terms of the hamburger shape, it's in the meat of the hamburger on the left side of the meat of the hamburger in terms of the five note pentatonic uh, shape. Okay, and then it, the other side of it's gonna be down here, which in the seven note straight shape is on the box double stop. It's on the bottom of the double stop. And in terms of the hamburger barbell, it's at the top of the barbell. So there's where it's at. So let's look at the whole steps and half steps then. If I go from, uh, let's do this from the one to the two, the one to the two, of the mixolydian is a whole step. It's going to be the same as the major until we get to this interval. So when I go from the six to the seven, we're going to have a different step from the major. And then when I go from the seven back to the one, it's going to be a different step resulting in that only one interval that's going to be different. 
when I go from the second to the third, uh, notice that that's a whole step, even though it looks like a half step because we've now crossed the fault line or the kink in the tuning. And when I go from uh, the third to the fourth, that's a half step. We're now at the at the top of the of the house, which is where the half steps lie live. And then when I go from the fourth to the fifth, that's going to be a whole step. And then when I go from the fifth to the sixth, where, where there's no fault line between these two, so this is just the normal pinky to pointer, which is going to be a whole step. And then when I go from the sixth to the seven, that's when we have that half step, which is strange, out of alignment with the major scale. And then it leads to going from the seven back to the one or eight, eight or one, and that doesn't have the leading tone. So now the mixolydian is the one major mode that doesn't have that leading tone, which is one of the things that we can kind of add to the mixolydian if we want to get that feel of pull going home. We can kind of throw that leading tone in possibly as we do with uh, the minor modes. So where do the half steps live? Well, we've got one, one to two, two to three is whole step, and then three to four uh, is a half step, and then there's only one note in between once we're at the top of the house. So three to four, four to five, five to six, and then six to seven. So three to four, six to seven, three to four, six to seven. Okay, so now let's go and do just our normal uh, intervals up here. And we should be repeating the intervals back here too, but I keep forgetting. So that might be useful to do if, if you're able to not forget, but I'm trying to squeeze as much stuff in to my mind as I can at one time. As much stuff into my mind as I can in one time, because my mind don't work for that long. I only have a little bit, I only have a small window of opportunity here. All right, we're gonna go from uh, the first of the mixolydian, so the second of the mixolydian, mixolydian, second of mode five mixolydian is gonna be a major second. How do I know it's a major second? Because it's it's two notes away. It's a two note away major second. The inverse is 12 minus two, which is going to be uh, 10. Therefore, it's a 10 note away minor third. So if I see this shape going boom, boom, two note away major second. The inverse, therefore, backwards is gonna be a 10 note away minor seven. How do I know? Because if I count from like this A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, I get back to the G. It's basically just a circle. Uh, if you don't think about octaves, at least. <laughs> and the second, uh, notice that the second, uh, what is that? Well, if I took the absolute mode number five as it's related to the Ionian, uh, which is the major scale, I note that if this Ionian is the major scale, the fifth of it is the Mixolydian. How do I get to the fifth? How many steps from one to five? It's only four steps to get to one to five because they go two, three, four, five if I'm on the one. Therefore, I can take five minus one to get to four, the number of steps to get the number of steps plus what I'm on in terms of relative positions, two, four plus two is six. And six, the sixth of the major scale, I know would make a minor chord because the two, three, six are minor chords from the perspective of the major scale. Further than that, I know it's the Aeolian mode and therefore it has all the intervals related to the Aeolian. So if I was gonna build something, a chord off of the two, I know that I can use all the intervals related to that A of a minor, which includes in particular the minor third. Okay, and where does the Aeolian live? Well, it's not in the house because it's a minor mode and the Phrygian is the only one that lives in the minor mode, it's in the basement. So it lives on the, on the house analogy in the flat shape where it's only the, the one string flat shape. In terms of the five note pentatonic hamburger barbell analogy, it's in the meat of the hamburger, right side of the meat of the hamburger. Okay, let's go to the next one. Ultra vase. You've spent enough time on that one. There's other people waiting. Wait, that's not the right one. I'm in the hamburger. I gotta get. I skipped the Locrian. I didn't want to talk to the Locrian. That's why. You have to deal with him. He's not that bad. He's not a bad person. He's just weird. You have to go to the attic and talk to the Locrian. Okay, fine. 
So that's going to be the Locrian or the third is going to be a three a three note away major third. And you look at that, you're like, that doesn't look like a three note away major third or four note away major third. It looks like it's a it looks like it's a it's a it's a perfect fourth. But no, because of the fault line between these two. So now all my shapes are all messed up because now the difference between the string from here to here is five notes. And then I have to go back. Now that's four notes. So it's only between these two strings, though. So don't let that throw you off on all the other shapes where that would be a perfect fourth. Right. That's the thing. And so what's what's the inverse then? Well, it's going to be 12 minus four, which is eight, which is eight note away. Uh, minor nine. So if I play this from top to bottom, we're talking four, uh, four note away major third. And then the inverse is going to be an eight note away minor nine. We also know that the, the, the third of mode number five, mixolydian, is five minus one is four plus three. Uh, four, five, six, seven, and we know that the seventh of the relative of the major scale is that crazy Locrian one that not only has a flat third, but also, I mean, it has the flat. It also has the flat fifth, right? And so, so I, so I, what chord would I make off of the B? Well, I can make a flat third with it, but but it also would have that flat fifth, which is going to give it that uh, tensiony sound. And where does this one? Uh, where does the Locrian live? It's in the house, it's the, it's, but it's in the attic of the house with the house analogy. And if I wanted to go from a seven note house analogy back to a pentatonic five note, that's the one I would remove. The corners of the house, top left corner, bottom right corner of the house. What about the, the hamburger uh, barbell analogy? Well, then it wouldn't even be it wouldn't even be in the hamburger or barbell because it wouldn't be in the five note pentatonic, but would have to be added to. And you can see it more clearly over here. Here's the hamburger. You have to add it to the left of the hamburger. Why? Because you had to put the ball cap on the hamburger so that it can see in the sun as it's hitting it at the beach, which made it top heavy. So then you had to put a little support on the major support beam over here of the bottom left bun of the hamburger. Uh, which is where the major is, and you put Locrian there to help it out. All right, let's go to the next one. Makes perfect sense. I see how that works now. Why didn't anybody tell me about the hamburger? No one, no one likes to talk about the hamburger. They just, I don't know. Let's go to the next one. The fourth of uh, the mode five mixolydian is going to be a five note away perfect fourth. And how do I know that? Because if I just go, this would just be five notes because of the kink in the tuning, which again looks funny because it looks like it should be an augmented fourth or like a flat fifth. But because of the kink in the tuning, we have this funny shape here and we just have to know that. So now I'm going to say, all right, uh, what's the inverse? Well, it's going to be 12 uh, minus five, which is a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I see that shape, I'm like, okay, top to bottom, that's gonna be a five note away perfect fourth now. Bottom to top, seven note away perfect fifth. No, where would the perfect fourth be if it wasn't for the kink in the tuning? It'd be back here, what we just looked at. But now it's up here. Also, the perfects are inverses of each other, uh, which is useful to know. The fourth of mode number five, mixolydian, is five minus one, which is four plus four is eight, but there's only seven modes. Eight minus seven is one, getting us to mode one, Ionian, otherwise known as the major scale. So obviously the first of the relative major would be a major chord, because I know that the one, four, five relative to the major scale would be major chord constructions. And beyond that, it's the actual major Ionian mode. Therefore, all the modes would be the same as the relative major. If I wanted to construct a more complex chord, I can use all of the intervals related to the major key, which would all still fit into my mixolydian that I'm working on here. Where does the major live? Well, it lives in this house analogy in the top right of the house, in the penthouse, looking up towards the ocean over here and in the hamburger barbell analogy, it's in the bottom left of the bone of the hamburger. It's the major support beam 
of the hamburger that's on the bottom right of the barbell. All right, let's go to the next one. Ultra vase, por favor. Por favor. We're gonna go, this one is gonna be uh, the fifth of mode number five. Mixolydian is a seven little way perfect fifth. And how do I know that? Because I have to count out here, five, six, seven. The fifth power cord is usually over here, but no, it's been shifted up one because of the kink in the tuning. Still a power cord, even though it's down here in the high strings and whatnot, we're still gonna, it's still a power cord by definition, apparently, even though it doesn't seem very powerful up there. Do you, don't you have to be on the low strings to make it a power cord or something? No, it's just the interval, dude, I guess, whatever. I think you have to be using like a heavy E, the E or the A string, or it doesn't, it's not a power cord unless you're like, up at the top unless you got some amplification maybe or something you got some distortion on it whatever whoever came up with that is stupid let's go <laughs> so that's gonna be so it's a set the inverse of that is gonna be 12 minus 7 which is a five note away perfect four so if i go from top to bottom that's gonna be a, a seven note away perfect fifth bottom to top five note away perfect fourth the fifth of mode number five, mixolydian is five minus one is four, plus five is nine. Nine minus seven modes is two. And I know that the second of the relative of the major scale would build a minor chord because the two, three, five of a major scale would be the minor chord constructions with a minor third. But beyond that, I know that it's the mode two, which is Dorian, which has all of the minor intervals, but has the distinctive, I think it's the sixth, it has a major sixth in it. So so if, I, so if I know that, I can go beyond just making a triad. There's nothing wrong with triads, but I'm just saying, if you wanted to get more complex and say, well, what can I do beyond that? Can I just do all the stuff that would be on the, the, minor, the minor chord, which is what I used to think? Not really, if you wanna be in the exact same mode of mixolydian, you could but you'd be adding another note if you happen to go to that sixth and use a minor six, which would be in the Aeolian mode instead of the major six, which is what would be related to the Dorian, which is what you're actually on here. The six, the, the, okay, I don't know what's happening. Go to the next one. No one told me this stuff before. I'm telling you, people like, I wish someone would have told me that. Because I was totally confused. Uh, anyways, I'm going to go to the next one. The sixth of mode number five, Mixolydian, is going to be a nine note away major six. How do I know that? Because I can count from here to here, five, and then ten, nine. Now that looks like a ten note away, uh, which would be like a minor seven, but no because there's a kink in the tuning. The kink in the tuning is not here between these two strings, it's up here. That's where the fault line is. But this one is still on the other side of the fault line than this one, and it's, so it's still messing up our interval structure here. All right, so we have to deal with that because if, it, because if, I, was, if I was on this G up top, then the E is back here because you don't have that fault line situation. But that here we still have that here. So uh, the inverse would be uh, 12 minus nine, which would be three, three note away minor third. So if I go from top to bottom with that shape, that's a nine note away major six from bottom to top, three note away uh, minor third, remembering that the minors are the inverts of the majors typically. And we know that the sixth of mode number five, mixolydian is five minus one is four plus six. Uh, which would be 11, right? 11 minus seven modes, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, wait a sec. Five minus one is four plus six, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, it's 10 minus seven is three. And I know that the third of the relative major scale would be a minor chord because I know that the two, three, six would build a minor chord with a minor third instead of a major third. But beyond that, I know that it's actually mode three, which is Phrygian. So I would not only build a minor chord off it, but I can add that distinctive Phrygian-y minor second 
uh, if I wanted to. So I can get I can get crazy with that minor second uh, with this. The, and if I was, do, you know what I'm talking about. Let's do the last one. Just do the last one for crying out loud. Getting stuttering prick you. Okay, that was rude. Let's go to the seventh. This is gonna be the seventh is a 10 note away minor seven. Okay, how do I know that? Cause I can count up this is gonna be five and then 10. The minor seven usually would be back here, but because of the kink in the tuning, the fault line between these two, no inverse 12 minus 10 is two, two note away major second. So if I play from top to bottom, that's going to be a 10 note away minor seven. That's the distinctive minor seven in the major mode five mixolydian, the funny interval, the distinctive interval, the inverse then of course being a two note away uh, major uh, second. And the seventh of mode number five mixolydian is five minus one is four plus seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 minus seven modes is going to be 11 minus 7 is 4, uh, I think, 4, uh, and that's going to be the, the Lydian. So that's going to be the Lydian. And I know that the fourth of the major scale is going to build a major chord because the 1, 4, 5, like the bluesy stuff, are major chords. But beyond that, I know that it's a Lydian, which is mode number 4, which has all the same intervals as a major, including, of course, the major third, but also has that distinctive fourth, which is convenient to remember for the Lydian, because it's the fourth mode if you use absolute mode numbers, and it's the fourth interval that's weird, and the fourth interval is like the Locrian of the Lydian, which is kind of kind of makes sense, and it's actually a augmented uh, augmented uh, fourth, which is the same as a flat fifth. Okay, all right, so that makes sense. And where does the where does the Lydian live? By the way, I haven't been doing this. It's in the house because it's a major mode. It's under the sea, so it's not in the penthouse, but it's on the bottom still looking towards the ocean. And if I was going to go from a seven note major scale down to a five note pentatonic, it would be removed. I would be removing the B, Locrian, and the F, the Lydian. If we're talking hamburger barbell pentatonic analogy, then it would be in the barbell, which you can see more clearly up here, but it's not on the end of the barbells. Therefore, we wouldn't play it if we're playing a five note pentatonic, but would have to add it if we want to play the full seven notes. Okay, then we go back to back home. Whew, man, I think that took longer than normal. I'm gonna go back to the, we'll, we'll go back the other way, but first we need a, a joke, a joke breather. So these are just test jokes here, just practice session. All right, joke. All right, you know the, you know the media keeps telling me not to believe my lying eyes. That's what they keep telling me. Don't, they tell me, don't worry, we're not crazy. Don't believe your lying eyes. And it's like, like I don't get it because first, first off, I don't have a lion, you know? And, and if, I did, if I did have a lion, I feel like I should believe my lying eyes. The lion's eyes, because, because I would think that a lion generally has really good eyes, you know, because how, how do you think how do you think that a lion can spot like a gazelle on the other side of the savanna so that it could go after it it's got to have it's got to have good i mean i mean maybe they can, maybe a lion can't really see in color or something so if i wanted to like pick a a color maybe then i wouldn't trust my lion eyes but for the most part i think they're pretty good eyes and and possibly when they're hungry or something everything looks like a pork chop i would suppose so in that case, it, but if it was a well-fed line, but still, if, if, my line, if my line was growling at something, I would tend to believe there's actually something out there it's growling at. I trust my lion eyes on that. Honestly, if, if, you're, if you're telling my lion eyes are mistaken and there's actually nothing out there and I shouldn't trust my lion eyes, there's nothing out there is what you're saying. Then, then I'm sure you won't mind if I sick my lion to attack the the nothing ghost thing that's out there, right? And it, and and then we and then and then once my lion attacks, we can talk about whether or not we should trust my lion teeth. Should I trust my lion's teeth? Hey, are are my are my lion ears 
picking up on something out there. My lion ears are picking up on something. Sounds like a, it sounds like a terrified scream. Don't worry. I'm sure it's nothing. Just, just keep on mulling that mirage out there, lion. It's nothing. They're, they're telling me it's nothing. Just keep on mulling that mirage. Don't trust your lion eyes or lion ears. You just keep on, you just keep at it. Try, try to gaslight me saying there's nothing out there. I'm telling you. N n nothing, there's, there's nothing there no more out there. Why? Because my, because my line ate it, right? My line ate it. They're, so what, it, okay. I don't know. I think I could trim that one down. Wasn't the best. Anyways. Uh, all right, before I go back the other way, let's go to this one. And so now I'm just, I'm gonna try to look at my modes in one place again. So this time, instead of looking at the related modes, I wanna look at, I think it's called the complement modes, where I'm gonna keep the, I'm gonna keep the root the same. In this case, I'm looking at the A and just try to build all the different shapes for the different modes by interval around the same shape. So let's just go through them first and see if I can just kind of list out the different, different construction in terms of shape and in terms of interval and then maybe noodle around between them. So the first one, I'm in the major shape. So now I'm looking at this A, uh, the major shape. That would be what I would call shape number two. Uh, you might also call it just the major shape or from a cage system, an E uh, major shape because that would be making our E shape on the bar chord. It's not an E chord, it's an E major shape. All right, so then the intervals are over here, right? I'm gonna say, okay, it has, if I compare everything to that, so the first and look at it from an interval perspective, I've got the major uh, second, two note away, major second. I've got the three note away, uh, major third. I've got the five note away, perfect fifth. Uh, the seven note away. Wait a sec, let me do that again. I messed up. I got the two note away, uh, major second. I've got the three note away, major third. I've got the four note away, uh, major fourth. I've got the five note away. I'm uh, sorry, perfect fourth. I, okay, one more time. I'm a little, I'm a little out of it here. My joke took a lot out of me. Two note away, major second. Uh, and then we've got the four note away, major third. The five note away, perfect fifth. Seven note away. I'm sorry, five note away, perfect fourth. Seven note away, perfect fifth. And then the nine note away, major six. And then the 11 note away, major seven. Oh, I'm sorry. And then the octave. Man, messed that up pretty badly. Let's see if I play through it. It's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, you can't even get the major scale, idiot. What are you even doing here? Let's go to the next one, Dorian. So if I go to the Dorian, now the Dorian is, I might call this shape the Dorian shape. I can only also call it, I would call it generically shape number three. You might also call it a D shape because if you look at the related uh, G over here, you'd have the D shape, the little triangle to create it. So you might call it that. And let's look at that shape. So this would be a minor shape. And then I can say, okay, well, I'm gonna go from the, the, the second, the second of the Dorian is a two note away, major second still, like most seconds are. And then I've got the three note away, minor third. And then I've got the uh, five note, I've got the three note away, minor third. I've got the five note away, perfect fourth. I've got the seven note away, perfect fifth. I've got the nine note away, major six. That's where the distinctive interval is because it's a major six. I've got the 10 note away minor seven, which is normal for a minor mode. And then I've got the octave, 12 note away octave. So notice if I'm building a chord on that, all of these intervals would work in relation to the major to stay in the same key if I was, in the, if I was now in the Dorian. So if I play that up, it would be, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, 
let's go to the next one. This would be another minor mode. So I would want to compare it to the intervals of the related minor, basically. And it's got one distinctive interval, that being the minor second. This is what I would call shape number four. But notice it's on the first note of shape number four, which is the minor, the minor mode of the shape versus the second note, which would be the major mode of the shape, which would be the Lydian. So this would be the Phrygian shape. You might also call it a C shape because if you do it from the caged system, the related major would be this F over here. And, and if I build from that F my shape, you'd have that kind of C shape. Okay, so if I, let's play through it first this time. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then let's look at the intervals. So you have from one to two, there's the distinctive uh, one note away minor second, and then the third, minor third, as you would expect from minor mode. You have the, the fourth is a five note away perfect fourth, seven note away perfect fifth, and then you've got the eight note away minor, nine which and then you've got the normal uh for a minor mode 10 note away minor seven and then we've got the octave so once again one two three four five six seven eight eight seven six five four three two one all right let's compare that then to the next which is lydian which is the fourth mode the one four five are the majors are the major chords of the major mo of the major scale and also therefore the major modes being distinctive the characteristic that is distinct to, to know that is the third so now we have a major third i can compare the intervals to the major mode it's only going to have one distinct mode then which should be called an augmented fourth but here's being called a diminished fifth or it's the same thing but I need a f I need a fourth because I went from the third. I, I have two fifths here, so I so we usually you can call it two ways. But I but and I should fix my worksheet, but it's too complex to fix it. But where where do I lie over here? We're gonna say it's not too complex. I could fix it if I wanted to, but I don't because it it's just not worth my time. That's why it's just not worth my. Anyways, we're still on the fourth mode. Uh, I, it's still the fourth shape number four but notice it's shifted back. So we have the same shape number four covering two of our modes. It's just slightly different. And I would call this then the second note Lydian shape, right? Because it's the second note in the shape that you have to play from in order to be in the Lydian, still being shape number four, which we can see as also the C shape because the related Ionian is the E, which is right here. So, and if I played, the E there, you get our C shape within it. So what, is, what does that sound like? Well, it's going to be this time starting on the second note here. Lydian. So now I'm going to say, what are the intervals? Well, it's got the, the two note away major second, like most modes do, except for the Phrygian and the Lydian. It's got, because it's a major mode, a four note away major third. And then it's got that funny, this is the weird one, a augmented fourth, which is the same as a flat fifth. Anytime I see that shape, that's that tensiony shape. So it's going to be a six note away augmented fourth. It's got a seven note away perfect fifth, a nine note away major six, and eleven note away major seven, and then back to the octave. So it's going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. All right, let's go to the Mixolydian. Let's mix it up a bit with the Mixolydian, which is the fifth of the major scale, which means it's gonna be a major chord that we would construct. Beyond that, it's the fifth mode, Mixolydian, which has all the same intervals of the major scale, except the distinctive one difference for, for each mode compared to the major or minor, in this case, compared to the major, it's got the distinctive minor seven. So if I was to say this, what's this shape? This is what I would call shape number five. Uh, and you might also call it an A shape because if I looked at the Ionian mode, it's the D in this shape that would be the related Ionian, which would create this A shape from a caged shape uh, perspective. So let's play this one through. We'd say this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice it doesn't have the distinctive pull from 
the seven to the eight that most major modes do because it has that distinctive seven, uh, which is different. <laughs> so, so it looks like a minor. So that's the one we might want to add if we're playing around, which is a lot of times what happens in like bluesy kind of stuff where they're kind of playing around between the major seven and the minor seven and so on, going between the mixolydian and the major mode and the minor mode and kind of blending it all together. It sounds wonky, but just like a wonky house, just like the crooked timbers, they look cool as long as it's structurally sound. As long as the thing ain't falling down on you, then the wonky timbers are cool, man. That's what I feel like, but a little more, the more wonk, the better. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, and then, uh, and then we go to the minor. So now we're back to the minor mode. And so it's, uh, the, the, the minor is going to be the sixth. And I know that it's mode number six, the sixth of the related major is going to be a minor chord. So if clearly if I would build a minor chord, it must have a minor third in it. And then of course, this is the ones that I have to memorize these modes because I want to compare the other minors to them, the Phrygian and uh, uh, the Dorian, because the, the Phrygian and the Dorian will only have one interval that's different than this one. So the minors probably are most familiar shape. I can call it the minor shape or I can call it shape number one, which is what I would typically call it in terms of the cage system. It would be a, a, G, a G shape because the related major or Ionian is the C here. And if I was to build off of the C, I'd build this shape, which you can see is this shape, which is like the G shape. All right, so that's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's probably the most, for me, it's the most just known mode. Uh, so then, so what's it got in it then? Uh, we've got the, the, it still has the major second, which throws people off a lot because you would think it'd be a minor second because it's the minor mode, but no, even the minor mode has a major second in it. The only minor mode, well, the main minor, the other minor mode that doesn't is the Phrygian, which is more minor than the main minor. And then you, and then the Locrian's got its own crazy stuff going on too, but we're talking majors and minors here. So then we've got the uh, three note away major minor third, four note away perfect fifth, seven note away, I'm sorry, four note away, five note away, okay, let's do that again. Two note away major second, three note away minor third, five note away perfect fourth, seven note away perfect fifth, uh, eight note away minor six, 10 note away, minor seven, and then back to the octave. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So then of course we can kind of noodle around between these and try to say, I'm gonna sneakily in a song, be like, just pivot from like playing in the major Let's, let's go from like a major to, I'm gonna try to bounce from the major here down to like uh, the Lydian major, or let's go from a minor to a minor. Like if I went to like a Phrygian to the minor mode, let's try that. I'm gonna try to go back and forth between these two scrolling. I should hide the cells, but I don't feel like doing that. So like if we were in the Phrygian, that would be uh, four, the mode four or shape four. And then I got that distinctive second. And then I can, and then I can sneakily go to something that's less heavy by going to the minor. And the only thing different between the minor is that it has a major second. So you wouldn't really know that I've switched until I put that second in it, the B. So now it's like, wait a second, before you were playing the A sharp, B flat, or yeah, but now you're playing the B. And then I'm like, 
and then I'm like, but now I'm gonna go back to like the Phrygian all of a sudden. I'm just gonna be like, I'm still playing like the third, which is the same. Every the fourth is the same, the fifth is the same, the sixth is the same. But then I'm like, oh whoa, there's that flat second. What happened there? that tension he sound but then I'm like and then I'm like let it let it go man and then I go back to wait a sec the minor and then like toy with that uh i don't think i feel like going back to the intervals over here let's try uh i was doing well let's mess let's keep messing around with this thing oh, i was messing around with this shape like so i'm still trying to kind of work out if i was playing this shape going backwards from this c <laughs> And then, so I'm gonna go to each of them. I'm gonna try to do that with the A. So if I look at the A from here and build a chord, it goes, it goes A, C, E. And then I go from the B, which is, uh, which is the Locrian, but it's, it goes B, D, and then F and then the C, right? So I can, so if I, and then, and then I can, so if I put those together, I'm like, here's my A minor, and then, and now there's my A chord, A minor chord, and then here's my B, and then the chord's a bit of a stretch, and then back to the A. then the C and that sounds like it's ending right there to me so sometimes I throw in the flat make it like a, a C minor which is outside the chord but sometimes I play with that that flat fifth it's like the bluesy thing in, in A minor so maybe I'll do that so it still sounds like there's tension even go up to the D. Well, what is it?
Now I'm just trying to do it between like this to play the the A leaning back and then I'll do the same thing with the D. So I'm playing the the one four five of the minors and then the E. So I'm just going A. There's the A chord and then the same with the D underneath it. And then there's the D chord and then the A. And then the E. Back to the D. And then the A. And then just try to do variations of that.